Let us do some news. Today is, don't fuck up the date, don't fuck up the date, don't fuck up the date. Uh, May 24th, 2019. <laughs> Coming to you for the year 2004, it's the classic Wildcats with Mike B, aka Mike B Phony. No, it's, it's Mike B, aka Phony. Come on, man. Come on. And Uncle Chat. That's right. While we don't necessarily have a whole lot of news on classic to cover today, I'm sorry. Uh, we do, we do have, uh, well, basically nothing related to a uh, classic period. So yes, classic is out for some folks. You're the stress test happened. Uh, people were, uh, 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 we're breaking the servers as, uh, as, as it happens on most stress tests. Um, and next week I believe begins the, uh, uh another beta. So don't, don't get burnt out on classic before actual classic launches. Okay. Don't get, don't get, don't get caught up in all that mess. I'm trying, I'm telling you. So that way you could say, why didn't you take your own, why didn't you take your own advice, Mike B? When I, when classic drops, I'm like, eh, I'm already over it. <laughs> Cause it might happen. <laughs> we don't know. Uh, so we do have a number of things to cover today. Yes. We're going to talk about the T few versus phase clan thing briefly, mainly because, well, I mean, it's, I guess not briefly, we're going to talk about it a little bit. Uh, it's, it's. It seems like a lot of silly drama, but it's actually going to have some pretty interesting uh, ramifications uh, in the long run with other uh, people in the esports industry, like people that are uh, maybe just signing up with a certain um, uh, organizations or whatever. They're going to maybe be a bit more mindful of their contracts. Uh, so we'll get into that in a second. But news that I felt was bigger than the T Few versus Phase Clan thing is that Clicker Heroes. You're already like, what the fuck? Clicker Heroes, which is a, uh, it's an idle game. It's a clicker game available on basically every platform, uh, including PC um, and, uh, and mobile, etc. They have been removed from the uh, Apple App Store worldwide. Now, can anybody tell me why? Can anybody in chat, in Uncle Chat, Tell me why it was removed from the App Store worldwide. Come on. Doom, 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 doom. Mm, 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 mm. That's right, China. That sounds terrible out of context. That's right, it was. It was China. What the fuck? Like, seriously, it was. So, the game, Clicker Heroes, uh, was registered back in 2015. Uh, and within, uh, sorry, 2014, and within a couple of months, a, a someone, an entity in China registered the trademark for Clicker Heroes. And because of that, now, uh, the actual Clicker Heroes has been removed from the App Store worldwide. They are the original Clicker Heroes, but the Chinese clone for lack of a better term, uh, has actually made moves and made the appropriate moves, I guess legally in China, to actually have the game removed. Apple, for some reason, felt that instead of just removing it from the Chinese market, they're going to remove it from the entire uh, market period. I don't know if this has happened before like this, but copyright abuse is something that has happened, has been happening in, in Asia, just in general, um, forever. Uh, and as he says here, it says, the game is Clicker Heroes. We're currently losing $200, $300 a day because our game had been taken down worldwide instead of just China. This company, Shenzhen something technology, uh, received a trademark for, uh, in 2015 in China, even though it was already being used on our game before they trademarked it in 2014 on an Asian web portal. See the date page. Uh, my game was already using, and here is the third party's trademark application, which has a date of February 13, 2015. They didn't wait long to steal it less than three months. But despite explaining this as clear as I could to Apple and the third party, Apple sided with the cloners and took my game down. We don't have the resources to fight a legal trademark battle in China. So I guess that's the end of our game there and, and worldwide, really. That's the end of their game on iOS, period. Um, 
Uh, I believe it has been on a worldwide scale. Never. Yeah, I don't know. If, I don't know if this ever happened. This is the first time I, I've heard of this. But still, copyright doesn't exist in China. They do whatever they want for the most part. Well, they do what's the, what's for the benefit of them. Their copyright system is to for the benefit of of themselves. Obviously, the same way that our copyright system is uh, for the benefit of us. Um, and it is. It's still. It's shit though. Like because this could happen to anybody. Now, Clicker Heroes is not a small game, right? This is not. Well, while maybe with with us here, like this particular demographic of people here that are watching this show that that hang out here on these streams pretty regularly, maybe for us, Clicker Heroes is not that big of a deal. But you should know that in the idle game realm, <laughs> in the idle game industry, Clicker Heroes is kind of a big deal. Uh, and so, if a game of that size can just get swept under the rug because somebody came after the fact in China and registered the trademark and then petitioned Apple to have the game removed, apparently worldwide, uh, then that can happen to basically anybody. And I don't really see any kind of recourse. <laughs> I don't, I, it's, it's just, this is just, it's just bad. It's just, it's just bad. Uh, now, I don't know if, um, if there's any kind of, if, if maybe eventually we're getting like an update and they're going to, okay, so they only took it down to China. Cool. But that's kind of the point of this, of, 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 of them posting on Reddit and trying to get traction, uh, because this was, this is posted in r slash game dev, but it was also posted in r slash games, uh, and uh, obviously a number of other places as well. So, you know, people are trying to get the word out and hopefully Apple sees this and they're like, Hey, wow, maybe we should, you know, like not fuck this up, um, and do the right thing. But we'll have to just wait and see. So right now, the way it looks is if you don't if you don't register your trademark for whatever it is, especially when it comes to an app or something like that, if you don't register your trademark in China before they register your trademark in China, then you're basically asked out uh, for uh, if your if your game ever gets any kind of real traction anywhere. So, <sighs> um. What do you say? I'm not going to read that. Uh, <laughs> can't just rename, reskin, and, and re-release? They, I guess they can, but I mean, that's, I mean, that's kind of fucked up. You know, they, they, have to, they have to go through all the work to actually re, redo all their stuff. Uh, th their, their game that they created uh, in order to re-release. So, I mean, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. But uh, <laughs> um, you got 261.9 hours played on S Steam in Clicker Heroes. All right, so I have with me resident expert Blem on who's here to talk about Clicker Heroes. 261.9 hours. Holy shit. Holy shit. So there, yeah. Uh, oh, it's on Steam, right? So you're, you're in the clear, I guess. <laughs> I'm black all the fattest bullshit. <laughs> that, you AFK. That's the fucking game, Incogni. That's the game. <laughs> <laughs> you AFK that 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 AFK game, didn't you? Window window only focus for thirty seconds. <laughs> AFK counters, yeah, that's right. It's part of the game. It's part of the game. It's a legit. It's a legitimate strategy. All right. So there you go. That's the uh, uh, that's that's to me probably the biggest. That's the biggest news you need to pay attention to this week. But I guess I guess we could talk about this nonsense that's going on between T few and. And FaZe Clan. This is shit so childish. It's so childish. Man, I can't even I can't even tell you how childish this is. And maybe it seems childish because I'm old. Maybe that's what it is. So here we go. Yo, what is Whoops. Up, guys? I'm gonna keep this video really short and to the point. First I wanna say, um, all the stuff about the gambling, the stunts, the drinking. I told my lawyer I did not want that in there, and he will do exactly just that. He will take it out. So that is no worries. That is out of my way. What I really want to talk about is the main point. I never want to upset any- Fuck it, whatever. Okay, so he wants to basically to- well, No one cares about shit. Uh, he wants the, uh, uh, phase to release publicly a copy of the contract that he signed, uh, what, like a year and a half ago? Like, not even that long ago. Um, before- when he signed up for, uh, to be part of FaZe Clan. Now, Tfue is, uh, obviously a very popular, a uh, very popular Fortnite streamer. Uh, arguably, I guess, one of the best Fortnite streamers. Um, I know there's a whole lot of water with a lot of folks, but still, we should mention those things. Uh, and he <laughs> but he has generated quite a brand following. So, he was 
pretty much, I mean, for the most part, he pretty much didn't have a brand. And then he signed up with FaZe and then he blew up. He blew up and now he wants out of his contract because as it turns out, his contract is pretty shit. Now, shit contracts is not a new thing. Um, shit contracts are, are pretty much, I mean, it's pretty much, it's, it's pretty much a thing because here's what happens when a company wants to sign somebody on for whatever, right? It could be somebody that you're bringing on as a talent, somebody that you're bringing on as a developer, someone you're bringing on because you want to like maybe absorb their website into your, uh, into your ecosystem. Like we did with Zam. Uh, what you do is you basically, and I'm not saying we did this as Zam because I wasn't in charge of any of the paperwork on that, in that respect, but I'm I probably did. Uh, but what you do is you put a bunch of just ridiculous and probably illegal shit in your contract. And the idea is that they kick it back because their lawyer went over and said, no, no, change this, 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 this. And they take some of that shit out. But then when they don't kick it back and they just sign it. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, I can make it big on the internet. Sure. Okay. And they sign it. Uh, then all of a sudden you're like, oh shit. Okay. Well, you signed it. Cool. High fives, everybody. We're good. Uh, <laughs> and so it's, it's, it's become, it's, it's just become a thing where it's like these contracts are going to pop up all over the place. Uh, where or sorry, these, these, uh, um, Talent is going to basically go through the contract. It's going to be like, well, hold on a second. I got a shit ass contract too that I signed willingly. Uh, and you know what? It's, it's, that's your fault. Now, I'm not saying that TFU is uh, 100% to blame here. This is why I think this whole argument is so fucking stupid because basically TFU did not have anybody review his contract before he signed it. And uh, Banks. FaZe Banks, the bank's the CEO of, uh, and founder of, uh, uh, FaZe Clan, um, they should not have been sending out these, um, very harsh and very stupid, just very stupid, uh, contracts for people to sign, because it just gets you in trouble later on. Uh, just this little bit sounds almost like the whole thing of the Witcher author complaining because he took a lump sum instead of royalties because he felt the game was going to be shit, then wanted royalties, that's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is. The only difference is that this guy is more popular than the guy who wrote uh, the Witcher <laughs> on, on social media and just in general, but yes. Yeah. Kimu's lobbies. That's pretty much it. That's a, that's a really, really, that's a perfect, um, comparison there. But it also got like really silly with Banks himself responding to the whole thing. Now Banks is a pretty popular individual as well. I mean, let's just go ahead and look at this. Look at the sizes of these, uh, uh, of these followings because I'm curious just get the real numbers here. Uh, 1.7 million followers. Okay. So 1.7 million people are like, Oh shit. I got your back. T few. And then banks himself has, uh, 2.3 million people. So there's a, there's a lot of, there's a lot of people that are choosing sides right now. He says, by the way, we are indeed releasing the contract. By the way, that's what the video was. The video was please release contract, release contract, should release contract phase. Banks release contract is what he said. Uh, it just took two minutes to say that. Uh, by the way, we are indeed releasing the contract. Just got the phone with the higher ups and we're preparing it for you guys now. I have nothing to hide and everything I've said throughout all of this is the truth. We tried for a straight year to come to a new agreement and nothing apparently was, uh, well, they weren't able to reach any kind of agreement. And so what ended up happening was uh, TFU decided to take to social media and make it, uh, uh, and they basically made it a big thing through social media with the contracts or with the, uh, the, the lawsuit and all that. Uh, people bitch it because they wanted more money uh, when they fucked themselves. So, yeah, so, so to me, yeah, it does look like TFU basically, yeah, the contract did end up leaking. Um, and actually, yeah, and so the contract did end up leaking and FaZe actually, or Banks actually did end up coming back and saying, you know what? It was garbage. Do I actually have the, uh, uh, let me see. Let me see. Oh, this isn't it, but this is pretty funny though. He says, <laughs> like, I got code TFU tattooed on my body. Imagine how fucking stupid I have now, which immediately became like the best, the best copy pasta. And so this one popped up, you know, and <laughs> But it's just been this real, just real, just childish back and forth, like not a childish, this very unprofessional uh, back and forth on Twitter. And it's just, it's just, uh, it's just like, yo, get a, get a room and throw your lawyers in there, lawyers in there and just let them work the shit out. You should have gotten a lawyer to read your shit before you signed it. And on the flip side, you should not be sending out really like really fucked up and, uh, um, 
ab abusive contracts, really. I consider it to be pretty different from the Witcher thing. It seems unreasonable to judge a contract based on the expectation that you're going to go from 1,000 viewers to one of the top streamers in the world in the space of a year. Well, in the Witcher's... Well, I don't know. I don't really know if that's really that much of a difference, Kittens. Really? Uh, it, it seems unreasonable to judge a contract based on the expectation that you're going to be... Yeah, I don't know. I, I just feel like that's the exact same perspective that, uh, that the, the author of... The author whose name I can't even fucking remember now, because... <laughs> Because apparently it's not popular enough on Twitter, uh, but the contract is really bad. Yes, the contract is really bad. So it did, uh, it did get leaked, and Faze did say uh, he says he does admit that the contract was trash. Actually, in a tweet, I think they have a picture of the tweet, tweet here. Deep breath. All that being said, we had every intention of releasing uh, on releasing the contract. I have nothing to hide, and I've made a mistake of allowing uh, ship people to run my business. We've solved those issues, and we're trying our best. The contract was trash. There's no denying that. So, and he did. Yeah. So he did eventually come around and say that. The contract is shit and probably shouldn't have been done because it was run by shit people that used to run his business. Uh, and this isn't, this isn't totally unheard of. Like, honestly, this is not totally unheard of. You get, you basically, you get started and you buy whatever lawyer you can afford when you're just getting started. And then as you get, as you get bigger in this space, like, you know, from, from FaZe Clan's perspective, right? As you get much bigger and might get much more money in the space, then you hire better lawyers. And then what happens is the better lawyers come in and they're like, holy shit, that old contract is garbage. We should probably fix some of that. And that's probably one of the reasons why they said that there's all of these uh, different contracts that they're trying to work out with TFU and none of them actually ended up working out. Uh, it's because the new, the new, uh, um, the new, uh, lawyers were trying to basically make something work that was maybe, I guess, legal overall. You probably shouldn't have signed this. Yeah, you probably shouldn't. Have. Yeah, Tif, you probably should not have signed this. But, I mean, it, he really does. I, it, all the data points to Tfue owes his success currently to FaZe Clan. Um, now... The, 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 the actual law, the, the actual contract itself is going to have to be determined whether or not that is, uh, binding. You don't buy that at all? Oh, I'll fight, are you kidding me? I absolutely, 100, I'll fight people over this shit. <laughs> no, I 100% believe that to be true. Like, and what I, what I, what did I say? Let's make sure, let's make sure we backtrack here. Let's, let's, let's get this right. I said, currently, his current level of fame he could, he should definitely attribute that to FaZe Clan. I'm not saying that eventually wouldn't get popular on his own, but currently where he's at right now, he definitely got here because of his boost with FaZe Clan. That's, I don't, I don't feel like, I don't, I mean, I don't feel like there's any argument there, but if you have, if you have something to counter with that, then please. But, uh, I'm, I, maybe eventually he would have gotten super huge, but, uh, but right now, 2019, May, current popularity level due to FaZe. He should have had someone to read that contract. So I think that what's going to happen is they're going to have to settle this thing, figure out if the contract actually holds any weight. Um, I think that what happened was, uh, or what's obviously what happened was that uh, TFU uh, didn't like any of the contracts that FaZe Clan were throwing their way. And after so many back and forths, he decided, you know what? I'm not going to get what I want. I'm, I'm, I want to have full control over my own brand. Because he did. He created his own brand while being part of FaZe Clan. Uh, and he blew up much faster than he, he or anybody else had anticipated because he had three, three year contracts, still has two years left on it. Um, and he just wants control over his brand. But you sign a contract signing those rights away for three years. <laughs> uh, he blew up because one, he started streaming Fortnite as, as that, uh, as that was blowing up. And two, he's arguably the best Fortnite player in the world. And just, and that's just always going to lead to the same result. Phase accelerated that slightly, but by now he'd be at the same place. Huh? I don't agree with you. Um, I, I, I get what you're saying. He started streaming Fortnite. Uh, he's probably arguably the best player in the world. I still, I still don't think that that's enough. Those two things without having, uh, without having a platform to help show everybody that you're capable of doing those things competently. I don't think that, that those two things are enough to get him where he's at now. Eventually kittens. I agree. Like eventually he will definitely would have gotten to this point and probably, but I just feel like the boost, the platform that he was put on with phase really helped him uh, take off the eyeballs that he got initially. It's exponential from there. Once you get like a handful of people and they tell their friends, they tell their friends and all of a sudden you're like streaming with Ninja and all these other people, then it's like, it just fucking takes off. But if you're just a guy trying to make on your, there's probably people who are better than Tfue that are streaming right now to like 40 people on, on, uh, on Twitch. 
<clears throat> and that's just, it's just the way it is. Like, you know, they don't have a platform. They don't have their big break. They didn't get scouted, right? That's, that's, that's to me is how it works for talent. Um, eventually, yeah, eventually maybe he, he'll get to the point where he's going to be that big. But <sighs> the bottom line is though, this is, this is just the whole public facing side of this is so unprofessional, but apparently if you felt like this is the only way that he's going to get, um, he's going to get any kind of traction. So we don't know what's happening behind the scenes. We don't know if, if Banks was trying really hard to work with TFU and maybe, you know, TFU was being, uh, was just not being very cooperative with anything or, or vice versa. Maybe on the, maybe it's the flip. Maybe TFU is like really trying to make it work. And all of the, all the contracts that, uh, that phase the one Adam was, was like actual garbage. <laughs> so we don't know what it is. And maybe he felt like his last, his last outlet was, you know what? I'll just, uh, we'll just have to take it to the public and just go from there. Uh, look at Shroud. He was king of Reddit before signing with Cloud9, and that boosted his reach by a ton in a very short amount of time. <clears throat> yeah, now he's not with Cloud9. Um, is he? He's, he, he does, does he still have the Cloud9 name? I know for the longest time he was like really kind of not with Cloud9, but he still had the Cloud9 name attached to him. Uh, because I, cause contract. For contract reasons? Ha! Huh, how's that work? Uh, he had viewers before, but the popularity of viewers skyrocketed with a team behind him. Um, he's oh, he's completely done now. Okay, he's completely out. Yeah. Low players. Literally join a team like TSM for streaming money. Shroud, Shroud is the brand now. Oh, that's right, because he has uh, he has shirts and all that shit. Um, which is, you know, this is something that, like, these kind of brand deals and stuff, this is the stuff that, that TFU wanted to do. Like, if you wanted to go and, and, like, team up with Logitech, then that would go against, you know, FaZe Clan, because FaZe Clan teams up with Steel Series. I'm not sure if that's, that's 100% true, but but just as an example, right? Like, you can't just, you can't go and, and create uh, uh, partnerships with um, with sponsors that are competing with your sponsors of the... Uh, uh, of the organization that you're signed to. It just doesn't work that way. And that's the kind of freedom and flexibility that TFU wants to get with his own brand. So what does this mean for um, for esports going forward? You know, it just means that uh, Shroud blowing up coincided more with him distancing himself from Cloud9 and starting with PUBG. <laughs> that's, I mean, that 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 part, I mean, I, I have to agree it's true. It's, it's I, I don't want to agree with you on that one, Kittens, because then it makes my previous argument not look like it holds water. But... That's how I found him, and I was a Cloud9 fan before that. <laughs> so, but the Cloud9 is the reason why I stuck around, okay? Um, now, what does this mean for esports going forward? It's basically like, think about the, think about the, the 2 million people that, uh, that follow TFU, right? Or FaZe, right? 4 million combined. Probably some overlap. Let's just say 2 million, okay? I don't know how many of those are like aspiring esports candidates but let's just say like of the two million let's just say a thousand of them let's say a thousand of them is uh are, are looking at you know what i really want i really want to sign to an organization i want to become the next big esports sensation i want to be the next big streamer whatever uh i think a thousand is a pretty fucking lowball number but let's just go with that that's a thousand people that are now exposed to this kind of contract shenanigans that are going to be that much more savvy when it's their turn to go and sign contracts themselves. That doesn't necessarily mean that all 1,000 of them are going to get a contract in front of them and be like, you know what, let me go speak to my lawyer and I'll be back to you uh, with, uh, with any changes that maybe we feel is best, best for me going forward. And probably not the entire 1,000, but maybe, maybe, maybe like 50 of them. <laughs> so... <laughs> so there's 50 people out there that have had their lives changed because of this bullshit uh, going back and forth on on Twitter. Oh my god. And then this 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 is the best. It's just my favorite thing in the world. <sighs> but it really did. It really did. It's, it's taken over. It's everywhere. It was like number two on like worldwide trending. Uh, it's like uh, e ESPN esports. Uh, they had their own little article and it's kind of like it's ESPN esports. But even you go to the page, they have this like whole thing. A video pops up and it plays. It's like, doo -doo 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 I want to play their music. Let's play mine. And it's all, hey, welcome to the thing. Look at the esports desk here at ESPN. And we're going to talk a little bit today about uh, about uh, TFU versus FaZe. Contracts crazy. Look at this, whatever, blowing up on Twitter, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's like super, like, this is, look, it's got, oh, got so-and-so calling in from whatever city this is in the background. And, uh, <laughs> it's, it's like, it's really, it's everywhere. It's, everyone's talking about it. This, this is the biggest thing ever. It's fucking, it's, it's crazy. And then, of course, of course, Kotaku drops a very timely, a very well-timed 
Shady numbers and bad businesses inside of the esports bubble. That's the esports bubble. It's a bubble and it's got esports in the middle. Um, that's what esports looks like if you're looking when you're wondering. So this is an article that essentially goes over, and it's a good article too, by the way. Um, it goes over. I scroll up a little bit here. Uh, it goes over the history of esports, uh, mostly the the downs, right? The ups and downs. Rupert Murdoch uh, uh, throws like millions of dollars into an esports organization that lasted for like a fucking year because they were paying like a commentator three hundred thousand dollars for for like really bad casting, like lots of really like really poor uh, monetary decisions that were made. And then two thousand eight, during the the last financial crisis crisis that we had, um, that ended up basically shuttering. And so that was like the first esports bubble that burst. And now esports as a whole is blowing up. There's lots of talk about more people are watching what worlds than than uh, uh, than Super Bowl, which this is covered by the way in this article. And the uh, <laughs> intolerant underneath that bubble. That's what it, that's what it is. Uh, and and it's true. Like it's it's true. Wait, what did I say? Oh, I was like, uh, <laughs> now I'm picturing fucking intolerant in my head. I'm like, oh wait, it does kind of look like that, doesn't it? Um, but no, no, yeah. So 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 yeah. Hey, so back back. Okay, so. There's a shitload of money going into uh, going into esports. There's a lot of numbers that are being kind of fuzzed a little bit uh, in terms of how many people are watching esports and how many people are taking part in this, and how many people are doing that, and whatever. Uh, look at Owl. Look at Overwatch League. I don't know anybody that's watching Overwatch League uh, personally. It's possible that some of you guys may watch it, but how many of you guys are watching your team like religiously? Like, I mean, like actually watching your team play every single time. They play it, um, but if you go to, if you go to Blizzard, then their take is, oh man, Owl is the greatest thing ever. Like it's it's they talk it up to be much bigger than it actually is. I watched two matches all season. I have it on just to get the token drops. Not watching. There's an Overwatch League, right? I mean, obviously this particular sample size isn't necessarily great, but um, but still, I, I think you guys get the idea. How many people do you guys know that watch it religiously? Like, think of it on the, in, the, in regards to, like, baseball, when you have your favorite team, or NBA, uh, or, or football. People that watch their favorite teams. What do they do? They watch it. They watch their team play every opportunity that they get. And I just don't know anybody that does that with something like Overwatch League. Uh, I would say it's less of the viewership metrics than monetary numbers that are the shady things. Um, <clears throat> wait, you say it was less... Uh, viewership metrics, the monetary numbers that are shit. Oh, yeah, so you think that, yeah, the, uh, um, the view, that, that's what the article talks about, actually. It talks about how the viewership metrics of saying that there's more people watching this than the Super Bowl, and, there, and the reality is, like, well, it doesn't really take into account, you know, how, how like, how it's streamed, right? Like, so, for example, so more people watch Worlds than, than Super Bowl, but if Worlds is loading into everybody's launcher whenever they launch League of Legends, and it's always there whenever they, they toggle over, then, uh, uh, well, that doesn't really count. <laughs> View share matches are pretty straightforward, but it's some of the other shit that's weird. Yeah. So it's a good article if you want to read over it. Uh, one element here I just want to go ahead and read because it does, it does, like this one paragraph, it really does kind of um, open your eyes a little bit to what's been happening recently. Uh, so <clears throat> it says, over the last couple of years, a slew of esports organizations have run clean out of money and slunk off their, with their tails between their legs. Circuit Esports, Allegiance, the Movie Star Esports Channel, the uh, and Millennium, not to mention a huge number of uh, journalistic publications covering esports. Uh, layoffs are relatively common, including at organizations like Echo Fox, the ESL, and Infinite. Entire leagues have shuttered too, including Blizzard's Hero of the Storm Esports and H1Z1 Pro League, which suffered from delayed payments and, in the end, owed 15 teams a reported $200,000 each. So, just in the past couple of years, shit has been looking pretty good. <laughs> it has not been looking pretty good. Um, I love the article, though, as someone who works in esports. Right? Yeah, exactly. Um, if Gia's looking class, no. <laughs> how many, how many of the viewers on the count uh, are Activision view bots? Oh man, you imagine that'd be the, <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's, um, it, it's, it's a real thing. I mean, it even says here, it's like when, when you have, when you have, uh, a $25 million company with a valuation of $200 million, uh, dollars, like it looks, it looks weird. It's it's something that the numbers don't really add up, and and 
you could, you've heard of all these, you know, like Shaq and other uh, uh, Rick Fox, obviously with Echo Fox. Like you, the people, these are people with, like big names with big money that are putting money into esports. Every time you go to any kind of investor meeting or call, like esports always comes up. We always make fun of of you know esports ready, haha, right? Because it's a thing. Esports is on the tip of everybody's tongue, and it makes it feel like you know, like there's a lot more money in it than what's actually coming out of it. And that's exactly what this article covers. And I highly recommend you go and read it. It's uh, it's relatively relatively lengthy, lengthy. So uh, you might want to save up a good size poop for this one because it's uh, it's pretty it's pretty good. Just whenever you have a moment. All right, next up, <laughs> set it, Bill. But at least it's not a 25 minute video. <laughs> yeah, it could be. Jesus Christ. It's an audiobook. Gotta split that to a morning and a night poop. <laughs> yeah, you will have to. That's, oh, this is gonna be like three poops. That's how you that's how you rate things. That's a long book. I don't know, man. It's like it's like three months of poops. All right, so uh next up we have uh the uh Senate Bill. We talked about this yesterday a little bit, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm, I'm quite literally going to recap what we talked about yesterday. Uh, so there was a Senate bill that bans loot boxes. We talked about it last week a little bit. Um, and I remember it had a name, it had a name, an acronym was uh, Kaga, C-A-G-A, and we thought it was like super dumb acronym, given the, all the other acronyms that, that people come up with for bills that helps them get passed. And this one, not really. Um, <clears throat> if Mike was reading that, I'd probably listen. Huh. It's just take a long time. Uh, I'd, I'd probably lose my voice by the end of that. Uh, grab a short-sighted <laughs> rage grumble. Yeah. So this this article or this this bill, which I actually have the bill right here as well. Uh, the bill's available in the in the article if you want to go read it. The bill is really short. Uh, when I first when, I, when we first looked at it yesterday, I, I thought for sure like, I was like, wow, this is like this is not a lot and then i scroll down it's like you really get the get a feel it's like this is not a lot for a bill especially considering how often they repeat themselves in this bill uh we did read it over and it's really broad it's so broad that it's not going to go anywhere it's basically not going to go anywhere uh i don't know what what other publications are saying about outside of, I mean, right, you can read the new, uh, the, the proposed Senate bill that would ban loot boxes and games kids like, and that is very, that is a very like literal, like title there. This is not a, this is not a sensational title. Uh, it really is a bill that could ban loot boxes in games kids like. That is exactly what they allude to in the bill where they say, if the company has any, uh, any notion that a kid might play their game, they can't have loot boxes or microtransactions. So, very little, but also very biased wording. I, I don't, I don't, I, I guess. <laughs> I just, it's, it's a very factual headline. How's that? Perfectly legal in games uh, kids don't like, so EA is safe. Oh, if it's really broad, then that means those games that put loot boxes in, uh, those games that put loot boxes in their games are gonna have an easier time looking for loopholes. Uh, which may or may not be intentional. It's broad so that judges can fill in how they should act. But Mike, think of the kids. I know. So rate the game higher, uh, higher age level solved. No, absolutely not solved because this is not based off of the rating of the game. It's based off of, and I'll, I'll have to find it here. Um, so to say underage, I think. Underage, here you go. <clears throat> Prohibit, uh, prohibition and, on publication or distribution of video games containing pay to win microtransactions or purchasing loot boxes where the publisher or distributor has constructive knowledge that any users are under age 18. So there it is. Like that's, that's what I'm saying. It's broad. So it doesn't matter if it's, if it's rated, you know, M for mature or whatever. It just means that do you have any kind of reasonable knowledge that a kid can access and play this game? Answer is yes. Well, guess what? That's quite literally every game ever. And so there you go. Restrict to 18 plus. It doesn't work that way. I wish, I wish it was that easy, but it doesn't work that way. And what sucks is that, you know, because of how broad they're, they're going with the, with the verbiage on this, on this bill, it's just not going to go anywhere. It's just, it's just not going to go anywhere. Uh, and so, you know, what we talked about yesterday, you know, the, uh, uh, what was it saying? 
Better the devil you know. I remember this time. Thank you, Martha. Better the devil you know. It's like, do we want, do we want to just allow, uh, just allow loot boxes to exist? Or era, whatever, whatever, whoever it was. Shut up, era, band. Uh, do we want to allow loot boxes to exist? Because we at least know that that's what, what they are, and we get the $50, $60 price. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> just the ear just disappears. Uh, <laughs> uh, do we want to allow it not allow them to continue doing this? Because we at least know and understand that you know this is what a loot box is and this is where they go. Uh or this is how they how they they, they flesh those out, whether it's uh, cosmetics or you know, boosts or whatever. Uh or do we want to you know support a bill like this, which is not gonna happen, um, that will remove loot boxes from quite literally every game. And then they have to find some other shitty way to price gouge us that will eventually have to create yet another bill to go through and hopefully, uh, uh, you know, stomp that out, whatever that might be. We don't know. We didn't, we couldn't have predicted loot boxes 10 years ago. We thought 10 years ago, we thought that the end of the world was going to be day one DLC. I mean, really mass effect two, I think, uh, I mean, I, I, obviously a slew of other games, but just off the top of my head, Mass Effect 2 had day one DLC. Uh, <clears throat> 3 had day one DLC as well. But but yeah, I mean, we thought, yeah, we thought day one DLC was going to be the end of the world. And then what happened? Loot boxes happened. Uh, we were so wrong. Exactly. Uh, uh, so, and this is also Kittens, because I know I, I, I told you I didn't agree with you earlier. Like, I, I created Kittens' take on this yesterday. We talked about it. Uh, is, basically, is basically that, you know... The bill, the this bill is to uh, I don't want to put words in your mouth, kittens, but effectively what you had said was that this bill was uh, was it removing loot boxes is just not the answer. That effective parenting should be the answer, right? Is that correct, kittens? I don't want to again, don't want to put words in your mouth, but yeah. How do they? Or yes, there you go. Um, <clears throat> how do they regulate electronic games in Vegas? I like to see a bill that addresses drop chances, drop rates, chances, more transparency in general. You know what? I don't know. If they ever, if they've ever had to publish any of the actual um, rates anywhere, but well, for for machines, I don't know, but but actual table games, yeah, table games like those are obvious because because all the data is I literally on the table, <laughs> so you know what your chances are because all those table because because all the actual data for for figuring out what the uh, uh, what the odds are are quite literally on the table in most cases. <clears throat> uh, the problem is the game industry is incapable of regulating itself when it comes to loot boxes and microtransactions. They keep pushing to, uh, the bar on how far they could go without pissing people off. I know, and they've reached a point to where they have pissed people off, but do we wait until people, like the general public, the general game playing public, turns around and says, you know what, I'm not going to buy that game because of blank. And enough people do that, and then they change their, their mind, or do we wait for, or do we uh, uh, petition the government to get involved and start regulating, and now all of a sudden, our video games are owned by the government and are regulated by the government. Is that what we want? Is that something that you guys actually want? More government regulation in your video games? Or would you rather us just continue going on with the Wild Wild West theory and just hope that, you know, uh, that eventually somebody will, or a, a large a portion of us will be able to opt out of purchasing a specific game, a popular game, and then when that game dies horrifically, instead of blaming piracy, that they always do, uh, they'll be like, you know what? Maybe. Maybe just maybe. We need to step away from loot boxes and find some other way to make some money. People are already addicted. They can't stop playing. Uh, whoa, Jesus, that moved fast. Uh, it's a bit of a stretch to assume the problem only persists in the games industry. Every industry pushes their regulations exactly to the line and proceeds to go oh, to over it a little time to time uh, until they get in trouble. Yes, like the Nevada Gaming Commission that exists specifically to regulate Nevada gaming. Uh, yeah, no, it, it, it totally exists. Yeah, and it's, and it's there for a reason. Um, government regulation is good if the ESRB won't do their job regulating it for us. And they aren't. That's true. Yeah, they're not. <laughs> they're not doing enough. Uh, <clears throat> see, can I get my concealed gaming permit? Fucking law. Uh, the world is a big place. There are more. There, there are most likely plenty of markets to sell if they uh, if they say self regulation will handle it. <laughs> well, when uh, game companies can't manage their own greed, uh, I wouldn't mind government assist with it. So that's a thing. That's the thing. It's like it's it's very it's very difficult to get some government assistance without having actual government oversight. And so 
again, like this is the thing that you're committing to. And obviously I'm speaking for the states here, right? Um, this is something that you're committing to. You're saying, okay, we can't seem to manage this. We can't seem to trust our own appointed you know, regulators like the ESRB to, um, to regulate these things. So we're going to need some government assistance. Assistance, And so then when the government gets involved, that's a start. But who knows where it goes from there? Like, who knows where it goes from there uh, if the government gets involved with, uh, with, you know, with video games? Uh, <clears throat> you know, the gov government has regulations in other industries. Yeah, like, like, like I said, like the Nevada Gaming Commission is just like the first one that pops in my head. Um, so, yes, there are government – there are governing bodies that regulate industries within their own states or, or the country um, – that are that were set up because there needed to be a uh, a neutral force to uh, to actually have some kind of oversight. And so, are we at that point now in the games industry where we feel that we need to have the government come in and actually start doing this? I don't know. I don't know. Unless there's regulation, loot boxes will never stop because no amount of campaigning will stop uh, stop them. Since <clears throat> as long as there's whales, that's all the loot box makers care about. <sighs> well, I I I I I wish that was like i wish i wish it was as cut and dry i feel i do feel like I, I i really really feel like if the internet would were to actually you know not buy a game because of its name borderlands 3 like you know what maybe we don't want to maybe you know what maybe fuck them maybe we just won't buy borderlands 3 and then the game just fucking dies like you know like like there's no Nobody's playing the game and it just turns to shit. And then maybe they'll think, you know, maybe we should like not do that next time. Battlefront, right? The ba Battlefront, we, I mean, the internet blew up over that. Um, yeah, but that's a problem, right? The internet actually followed through with outrage. I know that's, that's, that's the hard part is the, the armchair activist. You know, it's just like, oh man, I'm not going to support this thing. And then, and then they, uh, they end up supporting it anyways. Uh, I'd just like to know if I'm buying a loot box, what my chances of getting are, aren't worse than my chances of getting struck by lightning. Yeah. In, uh, I want to say in China, they have in certain countries, I'll say they do have, uh, um, they do have to disclose like Activision specifically has to actually disclose the, uh, uh, the success rates or the chances for various loot boxes and everything else. If the U S government fails to manage medicine prices, I, I don't see them succeeding here. Thank you. So just exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like that's, that's the kind of thing you have to look out for. It's like we, if we, if we want government assistance, we have to be prepared for government oversight. Um, I mean, we saw a battlefront too, but it needs that more often with other companies. Yeah. It needs to happen like consistently. Uh, I'm out here boycotting games for shitty games practice. If you fuckers ever decide to join me and not buy shit. Hey, that's what I'm doing. I'm not, I'm not buying into EGS's bullshit. And it's hard. <laughs> it's, it's, it's supposed to be my job to play these games, all right? It's fucking hard. But I'm trying to be the dude. Uh, then you get another article about devs out of a job. Yeah. The FDA just approved a new treatment that costs $2 million. Approved. When loot boxes are done in an in actual harmful way, Battlefront, there's enough backlash to provoke change. At least in the, e -sport, in the sports game, EA lists rates for quality of cards in Ultimate Team. Huh. Yeah, so, so in its current state, I don't feel like this bill is going to go anywhere. Yeah, yes, eventually they could shape it a little bit, but that that verbiage of if any underage kid has an interest in your game, basically, that it makes it so broad. They almost this is almost a rewrite, and that's repeated in this multiple times. Uh, and it's, again, it's so broad that you essentially, you're going to need a rewrite for this entire thing. So in its current state, I don't feel like this is going to happen at all. Uh, one of you guys actually said that this is, uh, the guy who made it is actually one of your uh, state representatives and, and we're under the impression that he was doing this because he saw that it was something that a lot of people would get behind. And so he's doing it for the vote. Uh, I don't know anything about, about Mr. Holly, but, oh, it was you two kittens. Okay. All right. Excuse me. Um, so yeah, like, th so, so there you go. Like we, we don't even know if this, if there's actual, if there's any actual sincerity behind this or if it's just, uh, you know what, I'm going to drum up a little bit of support for my constituents here and, 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 you know, uh, uh, countrywide by pushing an, um, uh, <laughs> it's a bill like this that is so, so broad. According to what he said, a lot of parents brought it up to him. Well, there, well, 
but but good. It's 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 still worded super like way too broad broadly. I guess we'll just you know. <sighs> how long would it take for us to actually get any kind of response on this? Like actual, how long does it take to push a bill through? You guys remember the song, right? I don't remember the song. Does it say in the song how long it takes? Thirty two years. Fuck. <laughs> Thank you, Hera. <laughs> 32 years, Jesus Christ. Ah, oh, man. A few weeks to years. There you go. Ah. Holly's a piece of shit. He's from my state. Damn. I'm curious if this, uh, if this is just to get the ESA to wake up and start regulating themselves. Well, the ESA does not agree with this at all. Uh, as I mean, I mean, obviously, obviously, <clears throat> I actually, uh, uh, I'll read this out to you guys. It says this legislation is flawed and riddled with inaccuracies. It does not reflect how video games work, nor how our industry strives to deliver innovative and compelling entertainment experiences to our audiences. The impact of this bill would be far reaching and ultimately prove harmful to the player experience, not to mention the more than 220,000 Americans employed by the video game industry. We encourage the bill's co-sponsors to work with us to raise awareness about the tools and information in place to keep the control of video game play and in-game spending in parents' hands rather than the government's. And I gotta say, I agree with ESA on this one. <laughs> like, I do. I really agree with ESA on this one. This is not a bill that's gonna go anywhere. Uh, but if we're gonna do it, we gotta do it right. The last time the ESA chimed in on some shit a couple episodes ago on this show, I, I can't remember what it was about, but it, I was like, fuck the ESA. <laughs> it's like, these guys are dicks. No. Uh, I wish it could have been left with the, um, I wish this could have been left to the gaming community to create the bill. If only. If only. <sighs> Harmful to the player experience translate, they will resort to more intrusive and less optional uh, revenue streams to replace the loot box. Yo, it's funny, kittens. I read that out loud and I, th I think of um, the Matrix. Right where the uh, the architect and he says there are other there are other means of survival that we are willing to explore or something to that effect. That's exactly what it sounds like, <laughs> and 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 it's equal. I feel like it's it's a very apt comparison uh, as well. <clears throat> All right, moving on. Can we move on? Are we ready to move on yet? Yeah, let's see. If it was left up to, uh, if it was left up to us, we would have one line: free games for all. Ah, <sighs> Billy McBill face. <laughs> That is what the bill would be called. That would be that'd be one way to get a bill through or get a bill to, uh, attention. I should say not through. Uh, you know, those refunds on digital downloads. Yeah, you can thank the government intervention for that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. That's true. Last time the ESA has issues with the government was because of a tax plan they were passing. Uh, free games to all is what's happened to mobile games. All right. So speaking of mobile games, thank you for that transition, Digi. Thank you so much. Tencent and Riot Games developing mobile version of League of Legends. Holy shit. We're finally going to get a MOBA on our mobile devices. Mobile toxicity. <laughs> toxicity on the go. Uh, that means it could be toxic on mobile. To How funny. That toxic is the first thing that comes up. Jeez. Wow. So, um... <laughs> so now so league of legends is going to be the last the last people to make a uh to make a moba for ios meanwhile the rest of the industry the mobile industry is is already already making their a bazillion different battle royale uh uh clones so so league of legends is going to be or right is going to be making a league of legends mobile uh client and from what I read, this would have happened a long time ago because Tencent was pushing mobile a long time ago. And I know this from experience with having dealt with Tencent directly that they won't shut the fuck up about mobile. Every fucking thing they comes out of their fucking mouths was mobile. And this was back in 2013 or 2014. And so it would not surprise me if back then they were like, hey, Riot. Why don't you guys go ahead and make a mobile game? And then Riot was like, whoa, that's not how we roll. We don't make mobile games here, Riot. We just don't make games. <laughs> that's what we do here, Riot, right? We made one, we're done. One and done, okay? Hit it and quit it. That's it. And so, more than likely, yes, Tencent did tell them a long time ago to do that, and they finally got their way 
way too late. Meanwhile, Tencent's already made how many, how many MOBAs <laughs> they already have. And they're like, look, see, see, look, you wouldn't make one. We went and made one and look how much money we're making. Do you want some of this or no? And they're like, well, I guess, I get, I guess we could go ahead and make one. Uh, just like how Blizzard doesn't make mobile games. Oh, don't you have a phone? They make uh, intrusive advances towards women in the workplace. I know they have, they have to actually, yeah, they have to work around that. There's a schedule for that. Okay. You have to, that's a sexual harassment. And then, and then they have to, you know, work on uh, 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 future plans for, is that fucking, what is Donald Trump doing? What the fuck? <sighs> What is this autoplay? Of, oh my god! <laughs> what is this doing here? This is this doesn't match. <laughs> this is perfect. Let me just leave this up. This is fine. All right. <laughs> this shit is serious, guys. Okay. Yeah, he's talking about China, right? That's what he's saying right now. You can see it. It's right there. It's this 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 thing. Um. Oh man. So. Thank you, Anonymous Gifter. Uh, so, if you're looking for League of Legends on <laughs> on, on on your iOS devices, uh, don't worry. Don Donald Trump's going to make sure that happens. I guess. So there you go. The last, the seriously, like the last, the last people to get a fucking MOBA out is going to be Riot of all folks. <sighs> Trump is all about the Chinese market. You know what's funny? Uh, that. That whole article about, um, or that sub, that Reddit thread about how uh, Clicker Heroes is taken down in China, somebody had a really good suggestion. They were like, hey, you should pitch this to Donald Trump and Trump supporters because they're so anti-China that they'll probably actually get some traction for you. And you know what? Like, that's, a, that's actually a good idea. <laughs> like, that's a, seriously probably a good idea if you want to get some real traction, like... You know, start pitching that way. Hey, man, look, man, you know, imagine, imagine, imagine all of your favorite IPs not being able to be sold anywhere because of blank. Imagine a Budweiser. What if, what if they, what if they trademark Budweiser? Then you wouldn't get, you couldn't buy Budweiser anywhere. It doesn't matter if it's true. It doesn't matter if it's true. We don't do facts here. All right. Just make some shit up. Imagine, shut up. Uh, now, <clears throat> next up. This is just kind of a small announcement, I guess. But uh, the Sonic movie is being pushed back to Valentine's Day 2020. Taking a little bit more time to make Sonic just right. No VFX artists were harmed in the making of this movie. And you notice he's got gloves. And it's funny because I didn't realize that he didn't have gloves in the movie until i mean like i think i knew but it but it didn't click until i saw the glove and then i was like oh yeah <laughs> this is the fucking gloves on the actual movie character uh, so okay so the reason why that hashtag of no no vfx artists were harmed during making this movie is because when they said wow we okay we see that that we fucked up on the design of sonic we're gonna go ahead and fix it Everyone said, oh my god, the poor VFX artists, they're gonna have to work overtime, crunch, 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 crunch is the buzzword, crunch, 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 right? Um, and so now they're saying, okay, February 14th. They are trying so hard to cater to the internet to make everybody happy. I have to commend them for it. <laughs> I have to commend them for it. Like... This is a big deal to push back a movie release for something like this. Now, there's going to be some conspiracy theories running around. Some of them may be true. One that I heard was uh, that they actually had the correct Sonic the entire time. And they knew that they would get shit on for the bad Sonic. And so they released the bad Sonic to generate hype or attention, rather. And then, they, and then they're like, oh, oh. Oh my god. And then they went and they fixed it. And everyone's just kind of like, oh, they're gonna fix it. It's so great. I'm totally gonna go see this movie now. See? And they get you. They get you just like that. They know they try to do us dirty. I know. See? The whole time I had the real Sonic in the back. See that? So that's that's one theory that I heard. And I'll be I'll be honest, like, I mean, 
I mean, part of that I might think was true. Uh, because I guess it wouldn't take too long, too much to just make a shitty model just for the trailers. <laughs> to see. And then later, and then later, you know, just swap back out. Uh, is it too much time, effort, and money just for a publicity stunt? Not if you know that it will work. Not if you could play social media like a fucking fiddle, like everybody else does. If you know that it's going to work. And I feel like on paper, if you were like, if you, if you, if you, if, okay, if, if, if we on this show were like, like we, like my co-hosts, right? You guys over here. Uh, and, and myself, if we got, if we got, if someone's like, hey, what if they, what, bear with me, what if they release a Sonic and they use a shitty Sonic, but they had the real Sonic the whole time just to build hype? I might be like, yeah, oh, I guess, yeah, they probably, it'd be, it, but yeah, everyone would totally get outraged. They would totally get outraged. Absolutely. They spent already spent millions marketing it for a movie, so spend millions on a bad design to go viral isn't out of the realm of possibility. And how many millions do they really spend if they just tweeted out a video? Obviously, there's time spent making the video, cutting an editor has to go through and actually make the trailer, right? Which is like us, maybe a small team of editors, producer. I don't know, man. I don't have my tinfoil hat. I like the idea, but uh, there would be too many who had to keep their mouth shut about it. That's true. That's true. Hmm. But we'll see. Uh, here is why this is wrong. Into creating this stunt. There are too many loose ends. This would have leaked. But what if they tied up any loose ends? You don't know. It's mysteriously. So and so, editor for Universal found dead. <laughs> You don't know. All right. So yeah. Uh, February 14th. Plan ahead. Plan ahead. Take your loved one. Take your loved one to. Uh, or just I don't know. A friend or something like that. And go check it out. Uh, Endgame didn't leak. A marketing ploy for Sonic wouldn't necessarily. Oh wow. Yeah. It's true. If Endgame did not leak. I mean even. You know what's funny. Even the. Uh, uh, even the leaks for Game of Thrones. That, like, you guys know what Destiny is, right? Fucking man baby Destiny. Like, he was so mad at people on Reddit that he was quite literally actually, like, sending messages to folks with incorrect Game of Thrones spoilers. He was so mad, so mad that he was like, and he was, you can go check his fucking history. You, you slash uh, Neo Destiny. So upset. So upset that he's sending people Game of Thrones spoilers. Give me a fucking break. Give me a fucking break. Fuck, so dumb. <clears throat> All right, are there any Destiny fans in here? Probably not. <laughs> not if you're a Game Breaker fan. Because <laughs> they did not get along. Boy, they did not. Um, he bragged about on his podcast? Exa yeah, exactly. It's fucking, seriously. I don't take that back, man, baby. 100%. Uh, let's see. I guess it's some smaller, smaller news. This is something to look out for at E3. I don't know if you guys are... Uh, Looking forward to E3 at all. Any of you? Any of you? Any of you? As that an insult to man babies? <laughs> I know. Like myself. Uh, so, whoops. There we go. You guys know this guy, uh, George R.R. Martin. So he, uh, he, he, uh, he did some work on a show called Game of Thrones. Uh, but more interestingly, he has stated in his, in his blog... Because he blogs, he's a blogger, um, that he consulted on a video game out of Japan. Okay, I fucked that up. There we go. Consulted on a video game out of Japan. Um, it's not, yeah, not, not a blog. Uh, and then, through other sources, we see that the company he consulted with is from software. These are the makers of games such as the Souls series. Dark Souls Game of Thrones Edition. What we think is probably going to happen here is we're going to get a, a GRM uh, produced or written or whatever um, game from, from software announced at... E3. Uh, all I saw was Meow Wolf. <laughs> yeah, so what that did, it did say that on the other page. You're right. Uh, now, this is, this is again, it's just rumor. You even said that there. Rumor. 
Uh, but I'm fairly interested to see what this could be. It's supposed to be an open world ish game where you could ride a horse. I think that's pretty much the extent of what we know. But we know what kind of games that From Software make. So I'd imagine that whatever it is is probably going to be relatively difficult. So we'll see. Uh, but this is your this is your this is your E3. Yeah, this is your E3 pre spoilers. Ha ha! Now you can't be surprised when it comes out. It's like oh shit! This is Game of Thrones the the Dark Souls edition where you play as the Hound or you play as. Uh, well, I was just saying Ned Stark for some reason. So that's what happens. You start the episode, we start the season over. You start talking about names that don't have any impact later on. Uh, E3's already spoiled. No reason to watch. Ah, uh, cut that game. Those Drogon versus John Me. They already, <laughs> they already announced a new console this week. Already? Damn. Damn. I mean, yeah. Uh, E3's coming up in two weeks, right? Two, three or so. Uh, praise the Lord of Light. I would, I would not be mad. I mean, seriously, I would not be mad with a Game of Thrones themed um, Dark Souls style game. As somebody who does not play Dark Souls games, I would still be very pleased that it would it just exist. I would just want it to exist. Oh, kittens, that's funny. <laughs> We're gonna get like five hours of gameplay and two plus years of telling us more gameplay is coming. No! No, he does also say in the article though that, um, that, he, uh, uh, that he is working on the book He's like, sorry guys, no gameplay today, but <laughs> sorry guys, no book announcement today, but <laughs> um, that's pretty much the, that's pretty much it. But there was there was a pretty funny collection of of uh, Epic Game Store whoopsies that occurred, uh, oopsies uh, that occurred this past week. That uh, you know, I don't want to I, I don't want to like pick on Epic Game Store. I like to wait for like the big news to come out. But this shit was actually kind of hilarious. No, it is not the fact that they block people who try to buy too many games at once because the um, because they don't have a uh, uh, um, a shopping cart. It's not that. It's that somebody, per the GDPR, requested that their personal info to be removed from uh, from Epic's database, or he sent to them uh, from Epic's database. And then what he found out was that after he requested the information, they sent it, yeah, he, sorry, yeah, he, requested, he requested a copy. That's right, that's what it was. Uh, they sent it to the wrong person. So some other guy got, uh, let's see. First off, here's the response that he got. We regret to inform you that due to a human error, a player support representative accidentally also sent the information you requested to another player. We quickly recognized this mistake and followed up with the player and they confirmed that they deleted it from the local machine. We regret this error and cannot apologize enough for this mistake. As a result, we've already begun making changes to our process to ensure this does not happen again. Thanks for your understanding. And so what this guy is saying, uh, Turbo Toast 3000, if he's to be trusted, uh, his tag, by the way, is doxed by Epic, which is pretty hilarious. <laughs> this is right there. <laughs> uh, he says that the, the person who got the information was the one that reached back out to Epic and to this guy to say, hey, I have all your info. <laughs> and it wasn't because of them quickly recognizing the mistake. It was because he was like, hey, you gave me all this other guy's information. What the fuck am I supposed to do with it? Besides delete it, I promise, I swear. Uh, and so people are now advising that this guy, because you know, because of the uh, the GDPR, that he now has grounds to sue Epic. Um, but he lives in the EU, of course. Uh, and I don't know if it's as easy to sue somebody in. Um, in the EU, as it is in the States. If it was the States, I'd be like, oh yeah, soon, make money. Woo woo! Like, that's it. But in the EU, I have no idea if it's that easy. So everyone's saying, oh yeah, just sue him, just take him to court. You make some money, you make bank off this. I don't know if it's that easy, but he should if he can. Uh, if you operate in the EU, you can be sued for it. This can be expensive, even if it is a lesser sanction 
Uh, lesser sanctions will be subject to a maximum fine of either 10 million pounds or 2% of an organization's global turnover, whichever is greater. Motherfuck. Holy shit. Thank you, anonymous person. Um, government involvement again? Oh, I know. But this is definitely a good case. Privacy laws hold significant value here. GDPR violations means the government can go after you. Yeah, so this is, this is, a, it's a, it is a pretty big deal. Um, and this was posted, this was posted, uh, it's this, I think I'm in, I'm in fuck epic right now, of course. Uh, but it was cross posted a number of places. So obviously it's getting a little bit of traction. Everybody's suggesting that hey, you should probably go ahead and, and you know, sue, sue, uh, you don't have to sue. Okay. So you don't have to sue the, le this, that is the lesser, by the way, this is most severe, mostly a severe, which is a 4%. Jesus Christ. Uh, it says, I got an email from Epic yesterday after that. I went to Reddit, let everyone know. And after a few hours, come a DM from somebody who said they received the email with proof. He showed that Epic Games sent him the email and he reported it because of that, I was notified. So Epic did oopsie, kind sir reported it. And at last I knew about it. Oh man, just, just so, yeah. Like this is just some top notch Epic Game Store. Bullshit. Just the best. Oopsie. Yep. EGS didn't oopsie. <sighs> but that's it. That's all we got. <laughs> Epic Games are just shelling out personal information to whoever. This guy wants uh, wants personal information. Who's one? I don't know. Just throw them anybody's. Not sure. So, <laughs> just fucking just pull, pull out the Rolodex. Throw it to him. Whatever. Uh, so that's it. Chat. Thank you so much. Uncle Chat. My co-host, right over here. Thank you so much. Anonymous subgifter in chat. Thank you, wherever you are. I appreciate that. I did not miss those. Thank you. Um, Planicide, Monday night. All right? Planicide 2, Monday night. Emerald and C. Got it? That's all you need to know. All right. My name is Mike B, a.k.a. Phony. Find me at a.k.a. Mike B on all the things. And that's it. We'll see you.